Welcome to the Fit Vegan Podcast, the show where we help you optimize your health, fitness, and mindset on a whole food plant-based lifestyle. My name is Maxim Seguin. I am a former triathlete, powerlifter, bodybuilder, and basketball player. I've been vegan for nine years. I've also been able to coach over 350 vegans from 20 different countries to completely transform their bodies and their health. I'm excited for you to listen to today's episode. Let's get into the show. All right. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Fit Vegan Podcast. I'm joined by a very special guest, Dr. Michael Clapper. How are you doing today, sir? I'm just doing well and uh, so glad to be with you and your viewers. Thank you for the invitation. Yeah, same here. Well, I really appreciate you taking the time because um, I absolutely love the work that you're doing and actually have a little special surprise at, at the end of the podcast for some of the work that you're doing. Oh, lovely. I'm, I like those kind of surprises. <laughs> yeah, it'll be a good one. Good. Um so I, I would love to just jump into your story. Obviously, very familiar with who you are, did a, did a lot of research preparing for this show. Um, but for the people that potentially might be new to you, like what, what is your, your story and what got you to work in this space? Because you started a long time ago in bringing plant-based to the world when it wasn't what it is today. Indeed. Well, I'm a classically trained Western physician. I graduated from the University of Illinois College of Medicine in Chicago in 1972, 50 years ago, good heavens. <laughs> uh, and uh, for the first 10 years of my career, just practiced blood and guts, uh, emergency medicine, uh, and working in operating rooms, urgent care clinics, etc. cetera. Uh, but about uh, almost 10 years into uh, my uh, medical career, I had a plant-based awakening. I, I can go into that if you'd like, but I adopted a whole food plant-based diet. My body loved it. A, a 10 kilogram uh, spare tire of fat melted off my waist in about 12 weeks. My high blood pressure went to normal. My high cholesterol went normal. I felt great waking up in a nice lean body uh, every day. And uh, seeing that my father died of clogged arteries, I know I have those genes, and so there's no yeah. uh, no no cheating here. Your body's never not looking, you know, it knows what we're eating all the time. And uh, at that time, I got such a profound response that I, uh, I had left general practice uh, to become an anesthesiologist. I went back to general practice because now I knew what to tell my patients about getting leaner and healthier. Uh, which is your uh, bailiwick. Uh, and those patients who could adopt a whole food plant-based diet, like you recommend, uh, experience the same wonderful changes that your clients experience. Uh, they get leaner, their high blood pressure goes down, their cholesterol gets better. And I uh, get to stop these powerful medications. Of how exciting to de-prescribe the insulin and deep prescribe hypertensive medications, but they turn into normal, healthy human beings who don't have these diseases. They don't need the medication. In fact, yeah. you not only can get them off these medicines, you've got to get them off before they have adverse effects. So I've been a plant-based doc for the last 40 years and uh, you can't unring the bell. You know, uh, once you look behind the curtain, you can't pretend you don't know what's behind the curtain. There's no other way to practice medicine for me. And and my, uh, my mission now is to awaken the young medical students uh, before mm -hmm. pharmacosclerosis sets in their brain and they think that drugs and surgery are all that uh, is available to them to help their patients. It's what your patients are eating. It's the standard Western diet. Get them on a plant-based diet and these diseases go away. You know, this is what we're trying to do with our Moving Medicine Forward initiative, which is now the main focus of my work. So in a nutshell, big nut, but uh, in a nutshell, uh, that's uh, how I became to be a plant-based doc. And I'm the happiest doctor I know. My patients get healthy right, right before my eyes. It's such a fulfilling way to practice medicine. Yeah, absolutely. That's that's why I really love and, and enjoy your work because I think it's, um, I says, I, I've personally lost a, a partner and grandfather and family members to cancer and chronic diseases. And um, going plant-based for, for one, for my ex partner was something that really made a huge difference in, in her cancer journey. Um, and that's why like, I'm a big proponent of, of the work that you're doing. That's why I'm doing the work that I do is I don't want people to be in that position. Right. And I really appreciate that you're helping people with that. Um, 
So I'm curious, like when you transition and you had your, your own awakening to, to go on plant-based, I love that you said whole food plant-based, because I feel like even when I went vegan nine years ago, it wasn't an option to not be whole foods because there was nothing else. <laughs> like there was no like vegan treats and all the things that are available right now. So it was kind of like a blessing because you had to do it right when, when you transitioned. Um, what was it that made you like, obviously you lost the weight, you felt better. And then you, what, what was the connection that made you go from this to like, Oh, we can help people with different diseases and different chronic diseases. Well, I had first, I had become so frustrated after nine years in general practice. Uh, all my patients were experiencing the same thing. All of our colleagues, medical colleagues experienced today. Ah, my patients are all getting fatter and sicker. They're all having heart attacks and strokes. And nobody's getting healthier. And mm -hmm. uh, and I, out of despair, I left general practice to become an anesthesiologist. Uh, after a few years of anesthesia training, I realized I didn't uh, want to put people to sleep for the rest of my career. I'd rather go back to general practice and help them wake up because yeah. of what I had experienced. Um, so I had just come back because most of my patients were fitting in that category. They were middle-aged men and women, overweight, uh, high blood pressure, glucose intolerant, if not blatant type two diabetes. And so those are the folks I focused on. And mm. I found someone near where I was living that was giving plant-based uh, cooking lessons. And I would refer uh, my patients to these people. And uh, those who can jump on the plant-based train uh, experience these same wonderful effects. And I began to uh, take it as a given that mm. uh, this kind of diet running through the bloodstream uh, day after day would make, get people leaner uh, and would, you know, gorillas in the wild eating a plant-based diet don't develop clogged arteries. And Dr. Russelston showed us how the, the plaque will melt away in arteries. So I focused on the folks with artery disease because knowing that their pressure would get better and their arteries would open up. And the folks with the diabetes because they're, the insulin receptors were all clogged up with fat uh, and making them insulin resistant. And by definition, a diet of whole plant foods is a low fat diet. And as a few months of that going through the body clears out the insulin receptors and their diabetes would get better. So mm -hmm. that's what, and that's what I thought the scope of it would be. Uh, and uh, the, the blood pressure, the weight, the diabetes. But so, but it's a, a great diet for, for everybody. So yes. I began recommending it to basically all my patients and lo and behold, uh, I began, I get a call from patient G, doc, my, my, one of my lupus patients uh, with really sore lupus arthritic joints. He said, gee, my joints don't hurt anymore. And I checked in with her and, uh, and her kidney function was getting better and her inflammatory markers were coming down. And I said, hmm, something to this for autoimmune diseases. Uh, and then began seeing reports and had experience of patients with uh, follicular lymphomas actually Im improved after a water fast and a whole food plant-based diet. And I began to realize, you know, what organ system doesn't benefit from this? When you think about it, we are holistic yeah. creatures. Uh, the nutrition echoes through every cell in the body. Every tissue is affected by every meal that we eat. And so it stopped being surprising to me. It began to be a uh, fascination to see, oh, look, that disease gets better. and This disease gets better. And you know, a little voice on my shoulder of the master clinician says, of course they do, doctor. They were caused by, you know, eating a, an animal-based, highly processed diet, put a clean fuel to the body, and these diseases get better. And, and uh, uh, after, you know, published in the great medical journal, duh, you know, it, it's, yeah. uh, <laughs> it, after a while, it becomes a given that uh, the body, given the proper food, will function properly. Yeah. Well, th there seems to be such a big disconnection in people's mind of like th what they're eating and how they're actually feeling. And I only feel that now it's starting to be a little bit of an awakening for people to be like, oh, if I eat this, I don't feel that great. I feel like, but the majority of, of people in, in, in North America, at least don't make that connection. Um, I'm curious to know like what you've seen from your experience, like why do you think that is and how can we um, speed up the change? Because I feel like it's happening very slowly, but how can we speed up that process? Ah, the second part is the, uh, is the challenge there. Um, the first part has been fascinating. I've been a clinician for 50 years and I've seen medicine as a whole evolve. 
Mm -hmm. And uh, as every un new understanding comes into Western medicine, whether it's the microbiome or inflammation, these, these concepts that are now so important that I watch them emerge and become part of the everyday currency of, of medical practice. Uh, well, as I'm watching these things happen with my plant-based eyes, I'm also looking, well, how does that affect my patients on plant-based diets? Mm -hmm. And uh, as we learn about the microbiome, which has always been there, of course, we've always had these microbes in our gut. Uh, I began with fascination to see that, uh, of course, as you change from a, a flesh-based diet to a plant-based diet, of course, the, the microbes in the gut are going to change completely. Yeah. And it turns out the beneficial microbes, the Prevotellas and others that are uh, fostered by a plant-based diet, uh, they're not passive bystanders. They metabolize our food and they put out byproducts, which just happen to be neurotransmitters like dopamine and norepinephrine and serotonin. And these are chemicals that make us feel better. And they get into our, our nervous system, either by traveling up the vagus nerve or through our venous system. And it became such a common occurrence that people say, gee, uh, ever since I went plant-based, I'm just feeling better. I'm feeling more yeah. positive, I'm not as angry anymore. And now, as I remember, make that microbiome neurotransmitter connection, I'm thinking, yep, that's right. That, you know, that, that is what should happen. And it's, no, it's not or a mystery. Uh, it's, a, it's another validation from the universe that we are plant-eating hominids. Eat, eat it, you'll know be healthier, you'll feel better and happier. Uh, yeah. Now, now, how do we get people to to, to accept that? Yeah. Uh, well, that's why I was happy and honored to accept the invitation here because it's you folks in the communications world now who are communicating this truth now through podcasts and uh, and uh, uh, websites, etc., who are getting the word out, especially to the young people who we really have to meet, who we really have to, uh, to educate and influence. Uh, they're an internet generation. And so when you say, how do we do it? I mean, you are just so pitch perfect when you, you, your website is, is the fit vegan community, you know, that, that concept to put in people's heads that you can be a vegan, you can be healthy, you can be fit. And mm -hmm. there's a community of people around you doing this. That's so powerful. So when you ask, how does it get done? You're doing it and we are doing it. And uh, so, and it's getting easier. And, and there's, a, you know, they say you can't keep a hat pin in a cloth bag for very long. You know, the point comes out. And, yeah. and, the, and the truth is we are happier and healthier as, as plant eaters. And science is begrudgingly, uh, admitting it as much as the meat and dairy industries and the pharmaceutical industries would wish that wasn't emerging. It's the truth of it. It's coming out. And so we're seeing now the, the, the swerve because people can make money off of it. Uh, along comes these plant-based meats and these phony cheeses and these processed foods, which we both realize are not the bastions of, of whole food, plant-based and healthy foods. But yeah. if they help people transition away from the flesh foods and away from the dairy foods, I think they have a legitimate place as a transition food, yeah. um, uh, tool. Uh, and so yes, how is it going to be done? Well, that's one step. But again, it's this encouragement of the of the of the zeitgeist that's being created by people making this change, where it's not such a when I uh, fifty years ago or forty years ago, uh, you were viewed as a nuts and berries kook if you recommended this. But now if you say you're vegan or you're, you're plant based. Oh yeah, right. Yeah. So my brother went plant based three weeks ago. He's doing good with it, you know. And it's it's getting easier again, thanks to all of our work. Yeah, awesome. Yeah, I love it. When you say vegan now, people will say like, oh, I know someone or I tried and that's why it didn't work. So it's always an interesting, interesting opportunity to, to educate people. And now I appreciate you saying that. I, I feel like that is the main reason why I started my coaching practice is that for we've done over almost 600 transformation now. But for every one of those 600 transformation, there's a family that's been impacted and then the friends that are in that community. And so we're able to have a greater impact that way. Yes, it's wonderful. And that's absolutely right. And I know that for every patient, I get healthier. There's a family attached to that. And there are people at work who watch what he's eating for lunch and that he's losing weight and he's feeling better. And you're absolutely, uh, there's no small action, uh, no small victory here. Every one of them is magnified because we're living in such an interconnected world these days. So you're right. There's good reason to hope and keep on working.
Yeah, absolutely. If people see you thriving, people will be like, what are you doing? Tell me, right? There's an opportunity right there. Absolutely. Um, so, so I'm curious when you, when you talk to your patients and you recommend a whole food plant-based diet, is there a, a, a protocol to follow? Do you have like guidelines that you give to people or is it just trying to eat as many, um, as many plants as possible? Uh, yes, I have a four page handout that I give to my patients. Uh, there's lots of it available on the, on the internet, but, uh, but uh, yes, I have a protocol, but it's basically taking them through an eating day. Here's your, if you eat breakfast, uh, here, you know, here are, uh, two or three good breakfast ideas, lunches and dinners, have a big salad every day, you know, learn how to make some big vegetable soups, uh, uh, you know, have something steamed green and yellow every day if you can. Uh, and uh, and we'll talk about healthy starches and not to be afraid of carbohydrates in their whole forms. And uh, and just give them a bunch of recipe ideas. And, and you got to meet them where they're at. Uh, they may uh, have, as you said, had unsuccessful experiences. Well, what, what actually happened? And gee, well, uh, you know, you can make that, uh, the, 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 you can make a great bean chili instead of a beef chili, you know, if a fellow yeah. doesn't want to give up his Mexican food, doesn't have to. And uh, so you work with them. And, and I have coaches and guides uh, who, and uh, cooking instructors who can help people as they need it individually. Yeah, awesome. It actually just made me think of um, Adam Sud. Oh yes, Adam. Yeah, yes. He says hi. He just texted me yesterday. He's like, tell him, uh, Dr. Clapper that I say hi. <laughs> great. Yeah. What a, what, a, what a great example he is. What a great story. Yeah, he's what a great advocate a for, for plant-based nutrition. When, and he's just a guy, you know, but what a powerful story and, and such a heartful, sincere communicator. Uh, he's done so much good. I'm glad that you know him. Yeah. Um, so, you know, we talked about the disease prevention and potentially reversing some of the chronic diseases. Um, in, in terms of reversing chronic diseases, like, is there... Uh, Honestly, a, a, a protocol, but why is it so effective to be able to reverse chronic diseases? Because some people will use it as prevention. That's, I try to use it as prevention because I want to try to get to people before they're sick because past that they go to you. <laughs> before that, I'm trying to not get them there. Um, but what, what would that look like in terms of trying to reverse some, some chronic disease? I've always been interested in that. I have been giving lectures to medical students and to medical residents, surgical residents around the country. I just spoke to the Mayo Brother um, Clinic uh, medical residents who are gastroenterologists in Jacksonville. And they these are practicing clinicians. And it's similar to the medical students. They were there, show me the money, show, show me the mechanism. How does this work, doctor? Why does this work? And so I did up a slideshow on mechanisms of disease reversal through plant-based nutrition. And I have a slide there that basically answers your question, but I spend a good 10 minutes on this slide because we start with uh, what the standard Western diet is filled with salt and sugar. And then what happens when you cook animal muscle, all the, what you create, all the uh, oxidized cholesterol and the new 5GC and the free radicals and, and advanced glycation end products, all that onslaught. As soon as you go plant-based, the onslaught stops. Mm -hmm. And now your cells and your tissues have respite. They, ooh, they can start to use the repair mechanisms that we all have in every cell. But, but if it's constantly being barraged by free radicals and oxidized cholesterol and all these uh, contaminants, the body doesn't have a chance to repair itself. So as soon as you eliminate the animal products, you're giving your body enough respite to, uh, to begin to heal. Then, and as you pull out the, the burgers and buffalo wings and pepperoni pizzas, and you put in the soups and salads and steamed veggies and uh, steamed greens, etc., the the, ch the changes from like in computer analogy between one and zero, it, it's such a profound change. First of all, it's a high water content diet. All the soups and the salads and steamed vegetables, they're full of water. Mm -hmm. and, and it's like taking yourself to a car wash. We, get, we have this, this huge flux of water now sluicing through our cells, uh, washing away a lot of the, the contaminating molecules that build up. And, that, and the higher water content makes the blood less viscous. It flows more easily. It's more free-flowing blood. All the dark leafy greens that we are eating uh, promotes the, the production of nitric oxide in the artery wall muscles. And as a result, the arteries dilate ever so slightly. 
But due to Poiseuille's law, just a little dilation of blood flow, a little dilation of the arteries with this now less viscous, more free-flowing blood means there's a big increase in blood flow throughout all the capillary beds. So oxygen delivery goes up, nutrient delivery goes up. Uh, so, and so that's just from the water and the nitric oxide. When you go plant-based, you pull out the animal fats that have uh, this fat called arachidonic acid, which is a very powerful pro-inflammatory and inflammatory inciting fat. Well, you pull that out, and now your fats are coming from plant oils, from avocados and walnuts and chia seeds, etc. And uh, many of those fats are omega-3 fats, and they are anti-inflammatory. They quench free radicals. So you've changed the entire inflammatory balance in all the tissues throughout the body. Um, the uh, you've of course changed the microbiome uh, that's going to change everything in, in the uh, 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 throughout the whole body including in the brain uh, you know pick an organ system every one of them will benefit uh, from the changes that happen it is so profound and uh, i'm going to be putting this on my uh, uh, my uh, my website to this presentation and i'll invite your listeners to have a look at it. i'll get want to get it up there next week uh, but uh, yes, there are, there are dozens of mechanisms that that all kick in when one goes from a plant from an animal based diet to a plant based diet. The science is solid, and we need to take advantage of it. Yeah, and it's, for everyone listening, I'll put the link for to your website also, so they can have access to, to the presentation. Good. Um, and so basically, it feels like removing the meat basically gives breathing room for your body, like uh, space for for it to heal instead of just clogging up all the space in your body, constantly having to fight and deal with that in instead of healing. Absolutely. Uh, it's uh, when you stop hitting yourself in the head with a hammer, the headaches go away. You know? yes, and, uh, it's magical. <laughs> uh, <laughs> indeed. And uh, the same thing on a molecular level, when you stop putting in all these oxidizing molecules, in, then there's less oxidative damage happening in the cells. And, uh, uh, and the, the body responds so beautifully. The, uh, again, our gorilla and our bonobo cousins, up in, they're up in the trees eating leaves and fruit all day, a high carbohydrate, whole food, high fiber diet, and they don't develop type two diabetes. They don't develop clogged arteries. They don't uh, become obese. They have big bellies, but it's all full of fiber, not fat. Yeah. Um, so, uh, so we, you know, they're kind of the gold standard there. And if we just swerve our diet more towards our, uh, what our anatomy would dictate, we are plant eating creatures. We don't have big fangs on our teeth. We don't have claws on our hands. We're, we're plant eating hominids. With the same digestive system essentially that those uh, that our bonobo and gorilla cousins have and uh, if we eat that whole food plant-based diet we're going to get the same benefits yeah so many directions you said something really interesting um we don't have any fangs or, or claws i i recently made a video there's i don't know if you've heard there's a big raw meat movement happening right now no. uh, people eating raw meat like raw steaks drinking uh yell like egg whites eating hashed meat and saying it's really like healing for the gut and the body and they're going to live forever. And it just, we, again, same argument is like, we don't have fangs or claws. Like, how can that be the way that you're meant to eat? Oh, really? This is, you know, they may, because they stop eating, you know, that diet eliminates some things I agree should be eliminated. Dairy products, oils, um, uh, um, the uh, flour products uh, from the bakery and you stop eating those, yeah, you'll lose weight. But man, packing your intestines full of meat two, three times a day, that is a recipe for colon cancer. It's yeah. a recipe for type two diabetes. It's a high fat diet. Um, they're, they're going to spawn microbes in their gut uh, that make the, uh, the uh, gut leaky, uh, especially from all the endotoxin they're eating. That's gonna open the door to autoimmune diseases. Uh, all the TMAO this is going to generate uh, from, mm. uh, from and that's a, a trimethylamine oxide uh, from a meat-based diet drives cholesterol into the artery walls and creates atherosclerotic plaque. This is a recipe for heart attacks and strokes and, and all the free radicals and the advanced glycation end products uh, that get generated from eating meat um, damage the arteries in the brain. This is an invitation to dementia. Uh, mm -hmm. And so uh, these folks may feel good for a few months, but uh, I tell them, do not be seduced by these early changes. This is a recipe for colon cancer, uh, colitis, Crohn's disease, type 2 diabetes, heart attacks, strokes, and dementia. And 
problem. You, you stay on that diet for five, 10, 15 years. And I, I dread to think what's going to happen. Yeah, that's yeah, the thing yeah. that I see. And it's, as I said, it's not even cooked meat, it's raw meat. Raw and, meat. And, and that's the, I think that's the biggest battle I'm also fighting with people is um, people want to lose weight so badly that they're willing to explore ways that kind of currently align with their value system of eating meat. And then they go down these really weird paths to lose the weight. I'm like, you can do it on, on 100% yeah. whole food plant base. And so like the what we're doing today in the educational component is so important. How do you bite into a raw steak in that day? I, I mean, I mean, it's it's that's just stunning to me that they would do that. And of course, that's him and the uh, you know, let's um, fill it out a bit then. Um, in every piece of meat, or including organic grass and beef, goes comes out of the slaughterhouse. There, all the animals get their throats cut there. And as the carcass is eviscerated, as they pull the digestive system out, it's inevitable that the um, uh, uh, that the gut contents spill out. And yeah. if you take a culture tube uh, and, a sw and you run the swab over any cutting tip surface uh, in, in, this, in the meat packing plant, uh, you'll grow a glorious uh, growth of enteric bacteria, enter, uh, E. coli, Salmonella, Shigella, Enterococcus, Pseudomonas, the, the whole barrage, of, the whole rogues gallery of microbes that live in your gut. Mm -hmm. that uh, that can cause a lot of damage uh, you know, out in the uh, when they get into your body um, orally. Well, you're not cooking the meat, so mm -hmm. you're going to be eating these bacteria because there's a covering of them over every steak and chop that leaves the slaughterhouse. Yeah. Um, there's a there's a covering of these bacteria. And if they, however, are put in the meat case, and the ultraviolet light shine down on them, that will kill those surface bacteria, but that makes it worse because they're, the cell walls of these microbes then break up and they form this nasty lipopolysaccharide called endotoxin. Endotoxin is nasty stuff. It makes your blood clot, suppresses the your, your myocardial, your heart function, releases histamine, releases free radicals. And and it, and well, they're eating it raw, but even grilling the burger doesn't get rid of the endotoxin. It's heat stable stuff. So if you're eating raw meat, you're eating the, the gut microbes from these animals, you're eating the endotoxin from the breakdown of these microbes. Um, there's no way that a steady stream of that is going to do good things down in your intestines. And I said that opens the way to leaky gut and uh, chronic colitis and, and uh, diarrheal uh, problems. Uh, and if you, they like raw pork, well, welcome trichinosis uh, to, mm -hmm. to, the, uh, to the party there. Uh, it's a bizarre thing to do. Uh, you know, um, um, two million years ago on the African plains, when, when our roving bands of ancestors uh, were starving for calories and there was a rotting carcass of a zebra out on the plane, I'm sure we probably scavenged it and ate it and probably had diarrhea and many of them died from the food yeah. poisoning from yeah. that. Uh, but they don't think about that. But yeah, you know, that's the, that might be the one case where you, you might, you need to, if you're going to starve to death. But, sh but no, but in that situation these days or in yeah. western society this is uh this is a dreadful uh, uh, uh fad diet but and it's also a very elitist one what if everybody in uh, and, uh, all eight billion of us ate raw meat three times a day you know they're, it's going to destroy this planet uh, yeah. uh it's, a, it's a pretty arrogant uh, elitist way to, to look at nutrition well it's good for me no it's really not and it's certainly not good for the planet so yeah. this too shall pass. So they're going to learn the hard way from this. And the stories are going to start showing up in the medical journal. Raw, uh, the patient hospitalized with uh, uh, severe mesugalosis from eating raw meat. Uh, we'll, you'll start, we'll start seeing it in the journals and we'll shake our head and say, you know, they had to go down that rabbit hole. But it, it's a sad one to go down and you're good to speak against it. Yeah, no, I appreciate you sharing that. Um you brought up a good point of like people, people often use it as an argument, like, Hey, it's grass fed meat. It's wild caught salmon. Um, so even though it hasn't been raised on a farm, I was watching, I think one of your Ted talks, like it's, it is the combination of the protein. It's not actually whether it's wild caught or not. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, the well, farm farm raised salmon is just a disaster with all the antibiotics and antifungals. They feed these animals because uh, they all get infections. But um, even out in the wild, 
these are big predator fish, the, the salmon and the tuna, and they've been eating lots of little fish uh, who've been eating micro, uh, eating plankton, etc., that are now laced with mercury and pesticides and, and herbicides, and all that bioaccumulates in the flesh of the fish. And you look at that uh, piece of tuna on your plate, and you wonder, hmm, what, what's really in that? If I sent that off for mercury analysis or pesticide analysis, you know, what, what would that come back as? So I, you know, I certainly don't view it as a, as a healthy food. But worse yet, we are clear cutting the oceans. We are strip mining the oceans with these massive industrial fishing fleets. We're scooping out every uh, living creature there. And for, for every piece of wild caught and fish on your plate there, there's dozens of of animals that have been drowned in those nests, dozens of rays and, and sharks and dolphins and seabirds and turtles. And uh, mm -hmm. uh, there's a an ongoing holocaust on the ocean just to put that one little piece of wild caught you know, fish on your plate there. Uh, we've used fishing up. It's, it's time to let the oceans heal. No matter what role they played in history, that, that chapter is done. Turn the page on that. It's time for us to become a plant-eating species if we want to survive on this planet. We all see these, you know, the temperatures going up and the uh, and these fires devastating the planet because we cut down the trees and altered the the weather and we and the, we don't let the trees come back because we're grazing cattle on that land that used to be forest. Um, if we would just pull the cattle off the land, let the forest come back. As the trees grow, they take carbon dioxide out of the air and turn it into solid wood. They reverse global warming. Mm -hmm. uh, letting the forest come back is the key to reversing our environmental problems. Um, but it requires getting those cattle off the land, and that means uh, uh, becoming a plant-eating society. And the ranchers will do something else with that land. If, if the land can grow grass to feed your cattle, it can grow industrial hemp, it can grow some, yeah. some other grain. Uh, it's, nobody's taken the farmers and ranchers off their land. Just do something else with it. Just don't run, don't raise flesh on it. Raise, raise food for people uh, that grows out of the ground. So uh, it's all of a piece. You know, it's, it's, it's time for us to move past fishing and meat eating, uh, become healthy plant eaters, and we'll save our own futures. Yeah, we definitely seen a lot of farmers shift what they're cultivating um, towards a more plant-based centric movement. Um, so it's, it's been really fun to, to see and hear because like, yeah, you're right. It's it's definitely also beyond the, the health aspect. There's a deep environmental aspect and just longevity of, of, of planet Earth <laughs> if we continue heading down that road that it, it's slowly shifting. It's being more reported. The, the, yes. the, the vegan community is growing and, and thankfully online is helping with that. Yes, indeed. You know, as they say, you uh, it doesn't matter what your cholesterol level is if you don't have a healthy planet to live on. And, uh, and you know, that's, that's really you know, important to keep in mind here. Um, and, and young people like you, you know, are saddled with this, you know, the, this burden of, of reversing climate change, uh, thanks to the blindness of, of my generation. Uh, and, but, you, but it's doable. But it, be, it depends on becoming plant-based and letting those full trees come back, and, uh, and that's where you're you're leading the way on this one. So, yeah, uh, I love you said that. Uh, doesn't matter what your cholesterol is if you don't have a plant to live on. I tell that to members. Like, doesn't matter how fit you look if you have an unhealthy body to live on, because you can look fit but not actually be healthy. It's very, very yeah. common in the industry. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, so we, we talked about uh, reversing chronic diseases in, in terms of, of prevention and disease proofing the body, because that's kind of one of uh, my own personal mission statement of uh, I want to help 10,000 people get lean, thrive and disease proof their bodies by 2033, because um, it's the age at which my partner passed away to, to, to match her age. So I'm trying to help 10,000 people. And so uh. disease proofing is this the why I'm doing it whole food plan based. And so how does that play a role in helping to reduce the, the risk, the chances, right? It's never, I see it as a seatbelt, right? If you get in a car accident, you're less likely to die and you're putting the chances on your side. Indeed, indeed. Uh, that's such an important concept. Um, uh, and uh, if, I, if you give me a, a long wind up here, uh, but it ties into an important uh, issue. Um, uh, back in the 1970s, uh, I was uh, practicing outside of Vancouver, actually, uh, and um, I was doing lots of home uh, deliveries, home births, uh, and uh, I had a number of vegan 
patients in my practice. I delivered a number of these vegan uh, babies. The, the mothers all had ideal pregnancies, easy deliveries. Um, and I watched uh, as the little babies grew into lovely, healthy, uh, strong, bright uh, adult human beings. And so a number of them married other vegan people and uh, and they had their own vegan babies, which I am old enough to watch grow. They're now adults. I've worked two generations of, um, of vegan children going to vegan adults. They are all lean. They, they, none of them uh, certainly have problems with obesity, no high blood pressure, no diabetes. Um, you raise a child on a whole food plant-based diet, you've essentially uh, disease-proof them. There's no reason these diseases should develop in a, in a lean, healthy, active, happy person's body. Mm -hmm. uh, and so, uh, again, a shout out to every mom and dad who's raising their child as a, on a plant-based diet and getting all sorts of static from their families. Yeah. You're doing the right thing. This is a gift beyond measure that you are bestowing upon this child. Uh, but um, but that that child raised on a, a truly healthy diet in a healthy supportive environment. Their, their immune system is tuned up. Their neurotransmitters are working well. Um, if a bacteria or a virus uh, comes along, they ought to be able to fight it off pretty well. There's no reason they should generate the clogged arteries and, that give, and high blood pressure that should give them strokes and all of that. So um, yes, it's, it's being in the, uh, the natural homo sapien should go through their full lifespan without developing these, these diseases, which are really 20th and 21st century diseases. You know, clogged yeah. arteries did not kill, kill a lot of people back 200 years ago. We, we, we created these diseases. So uh, yes, you can be disease proof with a healthy diet and lifestyle. And again, there's no guarantees in life quotes around disease proof it's Where a nobody's seatbelt. getting out of here alive <laughs> and yeah the, the 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 mortality rate is is 100 percent. you know we, we have to acknowledge that but at least while you're on this planet to be fully functional and healthy I, um i've just turned 75 i've got I'm no medicines i feel great i go for long bike rides i do yoga um and I'm not, you know, I, you know, I don't uh, have any diseases and that that's mm. the way we ought to get be living our lives these days i would think yeah, it's a thing to live a long time, but you want to make sure you're living a good life while you're living. And if you have the body, the body for it, um, we had to remember that the she was, was slightly, she was slightly over fifty, um, had a hard time getting up from her chair, like squatting was hurting so much inflammation in her body, and then whole food plant based lost fifty pounds is able to like do full squats now. She's uh, biking actually to raise money for kids with cancer, um, 125 miles. And so it just goes to show the power of, of whole food plant-based eating at, you know, whatever age. Absolutely. Yeah, it's never too late to start. Your, your body's looking for healthy food. Just the next meal is all that matters. So, so we get, get that food stream uh, whole and healthy, as you mentioned, and, and not to focus too much on, well, as you mentioned in your videos, uh, cal calories and protein, you know, make sure those are coming from wholesome plant-based sources. Yeah, but if they're, but if it's coming from lots of colorful fruits and vegetables, et cetera, the vitamins and minerals will sort themselves out with a little help from a little B12 there. Uh, and uh, like Dr. Colin Campbell said in his book, Whole, it, it's the whole food stream mm -hmm. going through you. It's it's not, you know, this one magic Asahi berry or one magic pinch of Himalayan yeah. sea salt. It's the whole food stream. And like every gorilla and bonobo knows, you know, keep moving those plants through you and your body will know what to do with them. Yeah, it's very interesting. We tend to look for like these specific superfoods that will solve the whole thing. And it's, it is the, 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 the variety that, that matters. Um, I should record an amazing podcast with Dr. B recently also. And we talked about like the gut health and, and, and variety and it's actually a lot simpler than people think it is. And we tend to over complexify it. And that's why most people don't take action on doing it. Yeah, absolutely. And it's really, as you well, it's simpler than you, than, you know, it's not that hard and uh, healthy people do it for you, whether rice and beans and fruits and vegetables, it's, it's, it's not, you know, that's the, the skeleton. I'm, I'm, that's a short end for a whole yeah. food plant-based diet, but you know, it's have a big salad every day, have some already vegetable soups and have some healthy starches, eat a bunch of legumes and you'd be fine. The truth of it is. Yeah. And I feel like the the biggest concern is, is protein for the majority of people, right? You look at what the health forks over knife, like all the, the topics, like the, the questions that people have, the concerns is like, but where am I going to get my protein? 
And I saw recently, I believe it was on Instagram, a clip from your podcast where you talked about all the amino acids, right? And do plants contain all the amino acids? And so just throw that question at you talking about protein, but also there's a belief that you need to combine, for example, rice and beans in one meal in order to be absorbed. If not, like your body will not take in the protein if it is not in the proper combination in one meal when you're eating it. Uh, and I see from the smile on your face, you know how fallacious that, that widespread belief is. You know, it just doesn't yeah. work work like that. First of all, all plants have all the amino acids. Mother Nature cannot design a soybean or a kernel of corn or an apple without using all nine amino acids. Um, so they're always in there. And yes, they're in various amounts. Uh, but again, as we eat the foods and chew them up, uh, it, it takes hours to pass through our digestive system. There's the remnants of the last meal's amino acids left in your uh, digestive system tract to, uh, for your body to absorb. Uh, your The intestinal lining is constantly sloughing off the, the lining cells. So there's always a fine slurry of animal cells in your intestine, your own animal cells, your own tissue. But that, that would complete any protein. Um, it, it, the whole thing, uh, you know, by the time any food, any meal makes it down through all 22 feet of intestine, of small intestine. Um, along the way, the, the, the glands of the lining of the intestine is, is, is studded with glands that secrete powerful digestive enzymes, intestinal amylases and lipases and proteases cascade off the walls of the intestine and mix into the food and then this muscular tube churns away and mixes these digestive enzymes in. And so by the time the food gets down to the end of the small intestine uh, where the final absorption takes place, the, the tyrosine from the corn that you ate has no idea where the lysine from that soybean came from. Uh, not, yeah. not that, you know, it all uh, slurries out into a very digestible mixture that goes up to your liver. Uh, the, uh, uh, the liver is able to uh, mix and match as it needs you to make it, make the, your own proteins. Uh, I have never uh, in 50 years of medicine written the diagnosis of protein deficiency on, on anybody's chart, vegan or not, it's just not an issue. If you're eating 2000 calories of whole plant foods, you are going to get 50 or 60 grams of high grade digestible protein. It's in the corn and beans and rice and bread. You can't help it. You know, it's just not an issue. Uh, eat whole foods. As you, as you say in your videos, if you're eating you know, you, uh, Oreo cookies and granola bars and energy drinks, yeah, they, you know, you can cause some imbalances. But if you're eating whole plant foods uh, that you like could recognize growing in the garden, tomatoes and cucumbers and corn, um, you're going to get 50, 60 grams or more of high grade proteins, especially if you emphasize the legumes, uh, beans, peas, chickpeas, lentils, you have that, you know, try for once a day or, you know, a number of times a week. Uh, relax. The pr it's not an issue. And uh, it's a really, a, it's a straw man, red herring, however you want to say it. But, and, and it's a powerful one. People can't, uh, meat equals protein, you know, we're no one place else to get it. But again, you know, where to, where to ask any elephant, where do you get your protein? They don't eat meat. Where to ask any giraffe, any buffalo, any uh, gorilla, you know, the, uh, they never worry about their protein because they don't have to. It's in the plant foods and, and we should, uh, we should take comfort from their example. Yeah, absolutely. And, and there's so many living examples now at this point. Um, you know, uh, Nima, I'm sure you're familiar with him. He's a friend of mine. Nima Delgado from Game oh, Yes, right. Yes. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah. You know, Patrick, um, there's Chris Paul. There's so many athletes now. They're like Lewis Hamilton that are performing at a really high level on a plant based diet. And so I'm happy it's becoming more popular and we're gaining some of these icons to be like, hey, you want to build muscle? You want to be faster? You want to be leaner? Like, here are multiple examples. Absolutely. And I'm so thankful for all you vegan athletes uh, from Robert Cheek and you and uh, all these fabulous endurance uh, athletes and the and, and now the, the famous ones that are coming around uh, and, you know, the film, uh, you know, the game changers. Uh, it's really changed the game and it's helped so many people. So you guys are ambassadors to, uh, to uh, healthy plant based living. I'm very grateful for your example. Yeah, I'm grateful for all of them. I'm actually connecting with Robert this week because I'm going on oh. the Chef AJ show and he's hosting a bodybuilding week. Um, so I'll be connecting with Robert in, in two days. Oh, well, say hi to him for me. He's another, another hero of mine. I will. Um, 
So I had a question. I heard you talk about uh, the new salt, no oil and um, sugar, no salt, and, sugar, and oil. Yeah, SOS. no sugar. Um, so I'm curious as to like the sugar, I completely understand the oil for sure. I totally understand the salt part. I, I have a question because if you're looking at like a lot of athletes that are training, if you're eating whole food plant-based, like the, that level of electrolyte, right? So would that right. be for someone that's not necessarily like training really actively? Yes. I mean, if you're, and it's getting so hot everywhere, you're going out and you're sweating buckets, you're losing sodium. Absolutely. You are entitled to put some more tamari on your rice at dinner or, uh, or add a little, uh, add more celery or more, uh, some salt containing uh, sauces or whatever on top of that. Uh, and there's a bell shaped curve in people's need for, for sodium. And mm -hmm. most folks, you know, they eat too much of it and it, it raises blood pressure, stiffens arteries. And actually now we know a high salt diet opens the door to autoimmune diseases, turns on genes that welcome in lupus and autoimmune diseases. But on the other side of the bell shaped curve, there's a bunch of people who need more salt in their, they need more sodium in their diet. They, uh, without it, they have low blood pressure, they have low energy, they don't feel good and they do better with some sodium. And for those folks, um, again, a pinch of salt on the, on the veggies is fine with me, as long as a pinch there. Um, mm. It's most of the high salt foods are the, are the processed foods. It's the restaurant yeah. meals, it's the spaghetti sauces, things like that have all the salt in it. But, uh, but those folks who, uh, there are those folks who do generally need uh, uh, to add a pinch of salt. Uh, and that's fine with me. Everyone needs to find their own balance on that. Yeah. Awesome. And, and so I just want to, I want to confirm you. So you have, is there two nonprofits that you work with, right? I believe I saw the Oasis. I'm program. sorry. So yeah. So uh, I think there's, there's two, no, uh, two nonprofits that you work with. One of them is I think the Oasis program, I believe what it's called. The uh, it's Oasis? part of the pure community for the. Oh, well, plant pure community. Yes. Right. Oh, they're Oasis program. Sorry. I didn't hear, hear that. Um, yes. Uh, they do very good work and I was happy to work with them. Mm hmm and then there's a then there's your um, moving medicine forward, correct? Right? Yes, and um, uh, plant per communities, uh, bless them. I uh, saw that we were doing work. Uh, well, let me focus on uh, uh, moving medicine forward, and I'll bring in PPC in a minute. Um, uh, my noble, wonderful, magical, powerful profession of medicine has really been a major bottleneck in, mm -hmm. in helping people to eat healthier. Doctors don't, we don't know anything about nutrition. Uh, that we, we don't respect it as, as the ability it has to reverse disease. Uh, we're, the most doctors are eating the same stuff themselves and from the hospital cafeteria to the steakhouse restaurants that they go to. Uh, and, um, uh, it's embarrassing, uh, to, to say the least there. And uh, there's a lot of things holding back our transition to a plant-based society. As I meant, everything from government to uh, the, the egg industry to farm, pharma, uh, et cetera. But the, just the ignorance of the medical profession uh, is uh, if, if every doctor knew the power of plant-based nutrition to reverse disease and everyone was eating it themselves and heartily recommending it to their patients what a change that would create in our whole society yeah. uh gee my doctor really cares about what i'm eating he says i should be eating you know more plant-based foods that would change everything but yet people go to the doctor you take some history does it physically i've never had they ask you what you ate no nah, i've never asked about that uh, well, that's got to change. And mm -hmm. so, as I mentioned, uh, I, and I've got to reach the early med students before they get on the conveyor belt of drugs and surgery, that uh, you are looking at not only the main diseases you're going to spend the majority of your time treating, uh, the obesity, diabetes, hypertension, plaque, diabetes, these are from what the patient's eating, and they are reversible diseases. I wish somebody had told me that when I was a first-year med student. It would have changed every diagnosis I made, etiology unknown, nonsense. It would have changed every treatment plan I recommended, start with a plant-based diet. Mm -hmm. Well, if we can reach uh, the uh, first, second, third-year med students with that message, will we'll create a generation of nutritionally aware doctors. And so that's what Moving Medicine Forward is doing. Um, if people are interested, go to my website and click on Moving Medicine Forward. You'll see what we're, we're doing and how you can help. 
Um, so, and, and I and I was going from med school to med school to med school before COVID came along, uh, but now I'm going from med school to med school via Zoom. I'm doing this electronically. I'm, I'm actually Probably less stressful. <laughs> reaching more, the blessing from the COVID virus, I'm reaching more medical students than ever. Um, but but we we have to hire people for follow up and uh, uh, administrative work, so we could certainly use some financial help if people want to uh, uh, to support our work. And that's where Plant Peer Communities came in, and they said, "Well, uh, uh, since we're a five hundred one c three organization, we will uh, uh, will uh, accept uh, donations on your behalf and then funnel them back to you." We're in the process of getting our own five hundred one five hundred one c three, so we won't okay. uh, need that dependence any longer. But along the way, as we partnered with Plant Peer Communities, um, they were they're doing they have a, a jumpstart program, the Oasis program, to mm -hmm. help people get started and they do 10 days of uh, of meals uh, and classes etc to help people get started so uh, blessings on plant pure communities they're doing some really beautiful work and they they helped us when when we really needed it but as, as i said uh, my, my focus is through moving medicine forward to awake those medical students up so they don't practice i spent the first 10 years of my life my medical career chasing numbers, high blood sugars, high cholesterol, high weights, uh, high blood pressures. Um, and that's why I left. It's so unsatisfying. And mm -hmm. I want to spare these young students from that faith there. You want to you want to heal these patients or don't you? If you if you why are you going into medicine? You want to heal these patients, then deal with what they're eating. Get them on a plant-based diet, and you will help these patients to heal on the deepest level. I wish someone had told me that, and that's the message I'm trying to convey to the uh, to the medical students. Oh, beautiful. I, I love that. And I completely agree with you because m most people will go to the doctor and whatever is said is what they're going to do. So if recommending a plant-based diet would be the number one thing that comes out their mouth, then we'd be able to help a lot more people. And so um, I'll link the two links down below for people to donate if they want to. And also the, the little surprise is I would like to donate $500 to Moving Medicine Forward. Um, we, uh, through our, our Fijian community, we donate several thousand dollars a month um, through many different ways, like missionfacts.org is another one. I'm going to add um, Moving Medicine Forward to the list. And we also, uh, also put an amount that is up um, to all my members that work with us for fat loss. And then we randomly select a winner every month. And they get to choose a family that is battling cancer. And then we donate that amount to that family. Um, and so, yeah, I just wanted wanted to give back because I really appreciate the work that you're doing. Oh, what a lovely gesture. What a lovely gift. Thank you so much for that. That will help on so many levels. And uh, and, and that's an ex example of what we all need to do for each other in this community. So thank you. Thank you. Yeah, you're, you're welcome. You're welcome. And for everyone else that wants to donate, again, I'll put the link in the show notes. Um, and Dr. Clapper, I, I just want to say a massive thank you for taking the time to share share your knowledge with us. Because as you were explaining things, I was like, oh, my God, I need like a, a Dr. Clapper gun when someone gives me an argument about veganism. I'm like, oh, he said this. He said this. <laughs> well, call on me anytime. I'm certainly glad to help. Awesome. I appreciate that. Well, yeah, thank you very much for taking the time to, to jump on the show and uh, looking forward to connecting with you in the future. Same here. And thanks for your wonderful work. Keep it up. We, we really need it. And you'll make it a better world for all of us. Thank all the you. best. Take care.